What can out-of-body experiences tell doctors about the mystery of death? Well, an international research project is studying the near-death phenomenon, trying to learn about saving lives from people who have literally come back from the dead. Twenty years ago, Don Piper died on this Texas bridge, the victim of a speeding 18-wheeler. I was killed instantly. I mean, I was immediately struck, crushed by the roof for the car collapsing, the steering wheel impaling me on the chest, and the dashboard collapsing on both of my legs. Paramedics worked frantically, yet found no sign of life. Officers covered Piper's crumpled body with a tarp and waited for the coroner. An hour and a half later, the unbelievable. And suddenly, without any warning, there under the tarp in the dark, I started singing, and I was back. Piper wrote about the experience in his bestseller, 90 Minutes in Heaven. Call it an out-of-body or near-death experience. For some, stories like Don Piper's suggest that life goes on after the body has died. I think it happens. I think patients see things. Karen Tucker sees it happen with patients in the cardiac care unit where she works. And later on, they said, I remember you trying to shock me, and I remember trying to say to you guys, I'm awake, I'm awake. Don't shock me, I'm awake, even though their heart wasn't beating. Two U.S. hospitals have joined an international project to study the phenomenon. The challenge is to prove that memories of death are more than what some guess is the brain shutting down at the end of life. The method is simple. Workers install small shelves above patient beds. A picture that can't be seen from floor level is placed on the shelf. The theory, some patients report floating above their body at death. If a patient that is pronounced dead but later revived can remember that image, it could be evidence that out-of-body stories may be fact and not an artificial memory. In Indianapolis, Dr. Mark Farber enrolled his cardiac unit at Wishard Memorial in the study. His team uses a special monitor that measures the amount of oxygen in the brain during cardiac arrest on each patient in the research. We may find out, for instance, that some of the people don't survive could be because the way we're resuscitating them is not as effective in terms of cerebral oxygenation compared to the people who do survive. That alone, he says, is reason enough to scientifically try to explain the stories of those like Don Piper, who say they've died and live to tell about it. If we can show that people actually are aware of what's going on, can see things that we can't explain how they could possibly see them, I think it opens up a whole new enterprise in further investigation. To me, that's what science is all about. Dr. Sam Parnia is the founder of the Awareness During Resuscitation Study, or AWARE is what it's called, and a critical care doctor at Cornell Medical Center. Dr. Parnia, good morning to you. Good morning. This is so fascinating because I think for years people have believed that when you get that flat line, that means death. But death really is a biological process, isn't it? That's right. I mean, if you think about it, most people out there think of death as being a moment. You're either dead or you're alive. And the reason for that is simple, because although we've always been fascinated by death, in the old days, when we tried to revive the dead, we weren't very successful. People used to tickle the throat, blow smoke, whip people, and of course it didn't work. So when your heart stopped, really you were dead. And that was 100 years ago. Nowadays, because of progress in resuscitation science, we're able to actually restart the heart after somebody has died. And what we found is that essentially there is no moment of death. Death begins when your heart stops. And it goes on through a period of time as you have a lack of blood flow into your brain. Your brain cells start to change a little bit and eventually they die. And this can go on for over an hour of time. Well, this study involving um, cardiac patients is, is twofold. You're trying to determine, A, if, if these folks really do have out-of-body experiences, near-death experiences, and B, what the implications are in terms of the way that you resuscitate patients. That's absolutely right. What we have set up now is the world's largest study, really looking at what happens to the mind and the brain during cardiac arrest when people have died. Because ultimately what we realize as a group of researchers is that we're not just dealing with brain cells, we're dealing with human beings. And what we found is that people who've died consistently, at least 10 to 20 percent of people who were then brought back to life, will tell us that they had consciousness present, that their mind and consciousness were working, and a proportion of them will tell us that they're able to see doctors and nurses working on them as if they're looking from above. So you want to determine whether that's a trick the brain plays on them or something that's really happening. How does oxygen in the brain play on all of this? 
as this machine measures it. Well, as you saw in the clip that we had from Indianapolis, one of the things we want to do is to find out if these claims are actually real or are they just an illusion. Now, most of us believe that these are probably just a trick of the mind, but we don't understand the mind, so it could be that they're really seeing these things. Now, the reason why we're u using oxygen, as you pointed out, uh, are as a monitor of oxygen, is simply that we know from all our studies that when people have died, their brain goes into a flatline state. So consciousness shouldn't be present, and so this is why this is a paradox. But it could also be that in that one individual or few individual cases, maybe somehow we did something amazing to get blood into them. So we are setting up these machines in different hospitals, and I'm going to show you how it works. We've only got a few seconds, so very quickly. Um, we attach this to the patients when they're having a cardiac arrest and they're being revived. And, uh, and what we want to find out is, did we manage to get better oxygen into that person? If we did, then that may indicate why they're having consciousness and memories present. All right, Dr. Pranaya, thank you very much. I'm sorry, near death, though. I don't know. I'd look at the picture. We'll be back after your local news.